Hello and welcome to a very casual live stream hangout on a Saturday afternoon here on Analog Toys. And uh, I thought I'd bring along a very special guest, a very dear friend of mine. It is the endlessly hilarious Sal from Two Cents Toys. How are you, man? But Tony, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> oh, well, um, we can talk about whatever we want, Sal. Anything we want to talk about. Um, I will say hello to uh, all the people in the chat. So we've got Go Figure, Broken Wolf, um, Bile, Jeff Morris, the Canuck, Kieran Ball, Gojatron. Oh, we have a super chat already. Brian Dillingham says, here is two cents times 100 in honor of your guests. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian. It's very clever. I like that. Yeah. Um, how have you been, Sal? What have you been up to? Uh, not not too bad, actually. Uh, speaking of the name, um, I, I don't think I've ever shared this publicly. At one point, when I was trying to come up with my channel name, it was originally going to be called Two Pence Toys instead of Cents. And I opted for Cents because I was like, well, I didn't feel like a, enough people would understand Pence versus Cents. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, eh, you know. I just decided I do prefer to prefer that. <laughs> but no, I've, I've been all right. I've been working a lot, a lot, a lot. For those that follow the channel, they'll notice I haven't uh, posted anything in 10 days, and that's not going to change anytime soon. It's it's going to be a minute before I can start posting again. I've been at work pretty much solid for the last yeah. couple of weeks. So having a, enjoying a nice night off so far, knock on wood. So. Yeah, well, unless you're here from work in the next, what, 27 minutes, you're pretty much good. <laughs> uh, ideally, yeah. Yeah. Even though the last time I had a night off, I was like, oh, good. I'm in the clear. I, I'm i good because I work night shift for those that don't know. I'm like, all right, I'm all I'm all set. I, I'm, I'm cruising. And then about an hour later, I got a phone call and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, oh yeah i'm like you need me to come into work which is weird that they would call me after shift starts and like oh yeah you gotta come in and work tomorrow for day shift i'm like all right that's a big cup of f me so i'm gonna take some <laughs> sleeping meds and go back to bed i guess yeah uh michael Schaefer says uh for a man that's moving that's a great looking background um michael i actually set this up yesterday because um well, a couple of reasons. I knew before I move, I've still got to do, um, what do you call it? 3 POA next weekend. I'll be doing from this house. Um, but yeah, when I, uh, when I move to the new house, the toys will probably be different what's on here, but this is kind of the setup that I'm going to have for, um, I'm going to have one in my collection room and then another setup. Um, so if, if this set up here, I can sort of get the camera back a bit further, you know, and put toys on the table and stuff like that. So um, it was a bit of a trial run before before the move. So I'll leave that set up for the three POA next week. Outstanding. It looks a lot better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see the other side of the room behind the camera. I took the bed apart in here the other day. I've, I've boxed a heap of stuff up. There's actually lots of room in here now. Um, now that the spare bed's been been taken apart so mm -hmm. yeah that's uh you you yourself and ryan had the uh i don't know if i would call it the pleasure but uh you got to facetime with me early and i showed you the state of affairs around the apartment and then now you understand where i said my collection has an apartment i just live here yeah <laughs> sal's apartment looks like a really badly organized toy store <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just covered in product all over the floor yep it's it's rough it's really rough but you know I, i'm making i'm making some headway you know and I wake up an hour early before work and start moving stuff around trying to get it organized yeah so, i'm one of the laziest people I, like i'll film something I'm like okay that review's done where do i do with it i just set it on the desk next to me and they just tend to pile up i probably have 30 pounds of action figures surrounding my computer right now. So. Action force. Yeah. Believe it or not, I have like nine scarabs, all my swarm are over here. Like it's, it's pretty much all action force 
with maybe a couple exceptions. Nine scarabs. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of scarabs. Wow. I bought three. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I keep buying more, especially now that they're back up on the website. So can't help it. But I, I what I want to do, like I, I told Bobby this the other day. I was like, my goal is to have the action force equivalent of his steel brigade collection. Like, I just want to have that many Swarm and Scarab to where I'm like, yeah, I have the largest collection of Swarm and Scarab out of anybody. <laughs> Apart from Bobby, probably. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I've got... Uh, what did I get? Three Scarabs. I think I've got four Swarm, two Wasp Raiders, three Tim Kennedys. Because <laughs> when, when I go and buy them now... Um, whether I'm pre-order, I mean, I pre-order everything. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm, I'm like, I want to keep a version of the the core character, whatever it is. Sometimes I want to keep a box one. Like Bobby uh, very kindly sent me a um, Tim Kennedy autograph on one of the um, like digital renderings of the figure because I've got that autograph. I was like, I've got to have. A, a mint box Tim Kennedy to, to go with it. So I've kept one mint in the box, mm -hmm. um, opened up the other two because I could, I have the base, you know, I have the Tim Kennedy um, figure there. But when I'm on the Valiverse website buying this stuff, I'm like, I need a, another one of those body armor vests or I need that accessory from that figure. And because uh, oh, yeah. of all the customizing that I've started mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, that's it. I tell people. <clears throat> I tell people to to not sleep on the Delta Trooper, especially the Delta Trooper pack, because that's that's the plate carrier that your figure comes with and Kennedy comes with. It's the best yeah. one, my favorite one out of, out of all of them. And uh, you have to uh, I have to apologize for my neighbors above me who are continuously making noise. So I don't know what they're doing <laughs> right now. It sounds like I don't think we want to know what they're doing. Um, we we can only hear it just slightly, Sal. So don't. Okay. It's not not it's, too bad. It's really loud on my end, so I, hopefully they're leaving soon. But <laughs> um, no, the, that plate carrier is my favorite one, and so I, for every one Delta Trooper I bought, I bought two weapons packs for him. So I think I have like twelve of those weapons packs coming or something. But, yeah, I bought. Um, I think I got four figures and six of the gear packs and a couple of the weapons packs um i was i was gonna get more of them i am really excited about the delta troopers mm -hmm. and i'm thinking i know bobby is gonna do a desert trooper at some point oh, so yeah. see, series four i think he's uh, i don't think that's a secret i'm sure he said that before um so i'm hanging on for the desert trooper because i've got a i've got to fill this vehicle here that's mm -hmm. what the Sergeant of version 2 in there at the moment. Mm -hmm. well, um, well, Matt Cobby, thank you for the super chat. Um, it says, hey, Tony, do you collect Hot Wheels at all? No, I'm not. Um, I've never even really been a car guy, you know. I'm not, I'm not that into. Mm -hmm. a, a part of me wishes that the human race would go back to riding horses. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think, like, you know, I do have a handful of, like, die-cast vehicles in the collection. A lot of things have been donated. Of course, I've got a number of Batmobiles and stuff, but none of them are Hot Wheels or anything like that, so. Mm -hmm. That's, I was never, uh, like, I, I went through a Hot Wheel phase when I was, like, in the second grade. Um, well, they weren't, to me, very much like Leonard. The core is G.I. Joe to me because it's the same thing. I don't know if they were Hot Wheel licensed, but they were just the cars. Mm -hmm. And you can get like a tray of them for like 20 bucks and you get like 15 yeah, yeah. cars or something when I was a kid. And uh, my dad, incidentally, was a Matchbox kid when he was younger. And he had, I don't know when they came out, but he had it already. Like he didn't go and buy it, but he had uh, the orange tracks with the loop-de-loops -loop and all that kind of stuff. And yep. so we kind of went through a phase in that and that's kind of the extent because I'm not a car guy either. I know what pedal makes it go and what pedal makes it stop. And I, I <laughs> yeah, but... oil every once in a while. And like, that's about it. Um, yeah. My, my brother was always the car guy. So. Uh, Wes Robinson. Thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, glad to finally make another live stream. Great to see you, Tony. And to hear you, Sal. It's always great to hear Sal. Me and Sal oh. talk every day. 
or we do. message at least anyway. Right. Um, and I've got such a bad habit of, um, you call it pocket dialing or butt dialing. Mm -hmm. We've got this group chat with me, Bobby, Ryan, Sal, and Michael French. And I'm horrendous for sticking my phone in my pocket and accidentally dialing a video chat. So I called the guys this morning. Um, well, this morning for me anyway, when I when I woke and I have to send them a, a message beforehand and go, this isn't a butt dial. I am actually trying to call it so they, they know the difference. <laughs> I, I, I affectionately refer to it as Tony's booty call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're my booty call, Sal. Yeah. <laughs> I always answer. So you, you do, you do. Ryan's pretty good as well at answering. I've had many discussions um, with Tony's butt. <laughs> uh, Tony Horton says, "Hey, Tony, what's been the hardest toy for you to find since you've been collecting?" Ooh. Oof. Um, there's probably a few there. Uh, the Jammer action figure that is the UK recolor of Stalker that comes that you could only get with the Action Force Z Force headquarters. That was hard to get. Um, um, Marion Ravenwood from. Indiana Jones. That was a, a gift from Michael at Retro Blasting. I had one once. It was missing the figure stand. I traded it. Always regretted it. And then my good friend Michael, um, I was blown away when he sent me that. Um, it was in perfect condition. Had this little stand so for her feet and everything. Um, what about you, Sal? So I'm, I'm going to be that guy. Um, I've never had a hard time finding any toy. I've had a difficult time finding toys that I'm willing to pay the price. Um, yeah. Cause like when people like yak face is one that people talk about a lot or blue snaggle tooth. It's like, they're not hard to find. They're just expensive. Um, yep. But usually modern stuff is hard to find. Um, like when it's uh, kind of fresh off the press, so to speak, it's hard to find unless you want to pay double retail for it. And then if you end up not finding it, cause that, it's a gamble we all we all make. You know, do we want to buy? You know, will I see this figure in shell in stores? Will I see it cheaper later? I don't know. Let me sit on it and kind of wait, and then the price goes up and up and up and up and up. So, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I pretty much I keep my expectations low when it comes to because <laughs> um, I'm like, well, if I find it, I find it. If I don't, I don't. Um, yeah, yeah. And I keep my grails realistic, like things I know I can find, like. Right now, one of the things I'm after is the bivouac. But yep, and it's it's not hard to find. It's just like, eh, I don't want to. I'd rather buy it from a person than rather than have it shipped. Um, one of the things yeah. I'm after that's getting difficult to find is the Night Force uh, Spirit, the UK exclusive, because mm -hmm. so, he's got that kind of black and red color scheme. And I think it makes him look really cool. But being a UK exclusive and Yep. Kind of expensive, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, do I really want it? And not for that price. So, yeah. When when I was sort of trying to answer this question, I had that same thing going around in my head because, you know, <clears throat> yeah, with with Jammer, like it wasn't actually hard to find. Now that I, think, you know, it was on eBay. I just had to prepare myself to spend four hundred dollars on one three and three quarter inch figure. That's a lot of money so i suppose when it when it comes to really rare stuff um oh okay here's here's the answer to the question the hardest thing for me to get is my mint in sealed box action man missile assault outfit it's the very last outfit they ever made for the line a line that ran for 18 years it had a very very short production run Loose examples go for an absolute fortune. Mint in box examples, God knows. Um, and when I was filming the story of Action Man documentary in England a number of years ago, and I was interviewing all the people from Palatoy, um, Bob Breakin and Brian Turner um, brought some stuff from their house, um, Action Man stuff, to kind of set up on the table where they could sit next to it for the interviews. And one of the things that Bob Breakin had was this mint and seal box missile assault. 
Um, and I acquired it from him several, several years later. Um, that was definitely, I, I only know of, of three known to exist. There, there might be more, but in sealed box, only three. Um, when that desert rat, the collectors mm. tell me that there's only six carded examples known of in collections around the world. So, Good Lord. yeah, yeah, that and that was hard to get because that popped up on a Facebook toy group. Mm -hmm. Um, but initially, the guy didn't want to ship it to Australia, he was too concerned about right. um, sending Take something that expensive over. overseas and um. But thank thank God we were able to come to uh, to an agreement and uh, and go from there. So, right, that's uh, a. There have been hard thing. I wouldn't say hard things to find necessarily, but like I I have a. Uh, well, all right then. Um, sorry, neighbors. <laughs> being loud. I don't know if they're howling or what's going on now, but um, I I, I like prototypes quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. and there have been some difficult ones to acquire i guess but that's probably it yeah uh wes robinson thank you for the super chat it says piggybacking on that question uh what was your best favorite acquisition oh um I, I could probably give you one from like every different toy line i i collect like um I, I loved acquiring the um, uh, Desert Convoy truck from the Indiana Jones line. Um, I loved acquiring the Robo Skull from Action Force. Um, I loved acquiring this guy, the original Action Man Desert Rat, long before I ever knew I was going to become Desert Rat. I probably had that in the collection for... Oh, 20 years, I probably had that. Um, yeah, a lot of favorite acquisitions. And you, Sam? Oh, Lord, where to start? Um, <laughs> uh, recently, one of my favorite things to acquire, which uh, Matt Swafford helped me do, was my Cobra Bug. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It, I, I, I get it. I know why people don't like it. I can look at it and see why people don't like it. But I, I love that thing so much. Did you have it as a kid? No. I didn't really know it existed until... Um, it, it's been a number of years now, but it was one of those, like... When I find vintage toys, especially things that existed prior to me existing, I can yeah. look at them and know I would like it. Like, if that, if I had been, you know, alive and, awa like, aware, I would have desired that Cobra Bug really badly. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Cobra Bug is probably my favorite recent acquisition. Um, maybe for Kenner Star Wars, it'd have to be my boxed uh, Rancor, um, which, big dummy me, it was a per an almost perfect box. There's a blemish on, on the top where someone had ripped off a price tag, but beyond that, the box was almost perfect. But again, big dummy me uh, didn't realize my curtains weren't drawn the whole way. Where I lived in my last place, so one of the size oh. of the boxes is a little bit faded compared to the rest. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's really all I can think of. Um, I mean, I, every acquisition, I would, I shouldn't say every acquisition because I've had some fucking, some freaking, sorry. I've had some pretty bad no, stickers in my life. You can swear here, Sal. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I've had some pretty, pretty awful stinkers in my, in my time especially buying some of these modern stuffs, but uh, most everything I'm, ha I'm happy to own it, especially when that uh, serotonin hits and I'm all happy. Like when I got the legacy Falcon, I was all excited for it. And now yeah, it yeah. sits on my floor because I can't put it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, Tac Tac Toys with film. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. It says, hope Tony, hope you're doing well, lad. I, I, I am. I was, um, had an exhausting day yesterday. I'm I'm packing up, getting ready to. I move house in. Um, well, I get the keys to the house next week, but I actually move the week after. So, um, I'll be I'll be moving bits and pieces. Um, and then yeah, we move just before Easter weekend. So, uh, Scott Hughes, thank you for the super chat. He says just to say hello to a couple of my favourite guys. Thank you, Scott. Much appreciated. 
Uh, speaking and... of Scott Hughes and Matt Swafford, uh, yourself, me, and uh, Scott Hughes have all been part of the Endless Bullets podcast. Yes, we oh. have, yeah. I would um, recommend listening to that after this. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, what, what, what was the one you did? Judge Dredd? Yeah, I did Judge Dredd. Yep. Yeah, yep. That Great was, episode. It was a hoot. Uh, Tac Tac Toys with Film. Thank you for another super chat. It says, I started reading the Action Force comics. Um, the originals or the new Valiverse ones? Um, I'm I'm desperate for uh, for issue six, seven, and eight to come out. Yeah. Um, hopefully soon. Hopefully I'm, soon. I'm I'm really excited for post issue eight. Um, I don't know if Bobby said publicly what happens after issue eight. Uh, so he I has, yeah. Okay. So uh, one through eight is kind of like mission files almost. Like it's like select stories about people, but after eight, it's like the full story starts. And I'm yeah. really excited for that kind of continuing story so and, uh, and for those of you who don't know issue six is about uh duster aka tim kennedy issue seven is all about pandora um and then issue eight is about oh uh, some some drunk sas guy <laughs> something uh i think is a dessert rat because he's a snack i think is the yeah the yeah yeah, he wear he wears a Borat mankini in the combat. <laughs> right. Um, Embargo, Embargo. No, I can't even speak this today. Embargo ninety seven. Thank you for the super chat. He says biggest selling regret. Um, that would be for me selling that or trading that Marion Ravenwood figure. Um, I don't really have a lot of se selling. Re oh yeah. There's one. Sal, are you familiar with the Johnny Seven one man army gun from the 1960s? Uh, if I saw a picture, I'd probably recognize it, but the name doesn't spark anything. All right. I'm going to. Why don't you answer that question if your biggest selling regret, and I'll pull this up. Uh, I regret selling years of my life to the US government. <laughs> No, um, pretty much like for those that don't know, I, I'm on what I call collection three at the moment because I consider collection one all the stuff I had from when I was a kid to my teenage years uh, that m the vast majority of it went into a yard sale and when it wasn't supposed to and it went away. Um, yep. Now I started collection two, which I was pure vintage. I only did vintage Star Wars and like the Toy Biz X-Men from the 90s. Like I really didn't. I was very specific in what I was getting. I would, I, you know, but some of that stuff, I, I, I sold all of it pretty much. Um, I do regret selling some things only because they've gone up in price. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I had a yak face. I had a blue snaggle tooth and I sold them and they're expensive now. But at the same time, I don't care about those figures. So it's not really a yeah. regret. If I wanted to complete Kenner Star Wars again, then yeah, that would be a huge regret because not, not now I got to spend all this money, but I, I just don't care about some of yeah. it because it's like, in, in a way, it's nice to purge things because it, at first it unburdens you. I, I didn't, I'm not familiar with that, but I had something similar when I was a kid. Um, it looked pretty much pretty different. It didn't have the rockets or anything like that, but mine was in a, I guess you'd call it urban camo. It was uh, gray camouflage, but it had a uh, brass colored ammo belt that fed through it. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I, this I, was, um, this was a 1960s. I want to say it was topper toys or someone who made it. Um, this was released in the UK as well. Different manufacturer. Um, very, very hard to come by today in this kind of condition. And I used to own it in this kind of condition with the box. Mm -hmm. um, I probably acquired this in the very late 90s, I think. And I had it for maybe two years and then sold it. Um, I wish I'd hung on to that. It was such a cool toy. And it's huge, man. It's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, um, that one of the fun things for me when I see toys like this that I don't I mean, like I don't have firsthand knowledge of, I can look at it and be like, oh yeah, that would break, that would break, that would be missing, that would break. Like, yeah, 
I'd imagine most examples we find probably the bipod is snapped off. The grenade on top is missing. The rockets are probably broken off in the barrel. Like uh, maybe the ammo belt's been taken out. Like that's what I'd imagine. Like if I ran into one at like a flea market, that's the kind of condition I would imagine I'd see it in. Yeah. Um, just trying to catch up with the chat again now. Where am I What's going? What's your here? regret, Tony? You kind of um, yourself off when you were pulling up the photo. Did you did you have that that uh, Johnny? Yeah. Guy? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I didn't have it as a kid, but I I acquired it as a collector in the late nineties. But I was you know in my early twenties. You know, it's like in your early twenties, you've never got two cents to rub together or two right. pence. And in most so cases, I'm trying to be a toy collector who's broke and I would come across stuff like that. And then as soon as I got offered something, not some nice action man stuff, mm -hmm. I would trade any, uh, my Lone Ranger collection, my $6 million man collection. Uh, it's the second time I've owned these collections. Cause I acquired all of that stuff in the nineties and then traded it for action man stuff. Um, so ne never really bothered me then. The one that did bother me was that, that Johnny seven, one man army gun. So Mm -hmm. I wish I had a hang hung on to that. Yeah. If you saw it today, it'd be neon orange and pink and a whole bunch of other colors. And Yeah, yeah. Kieran Ball says, Toy Lanta featured a boxed, graded, and encased in plastic USSS flag, and it was a bargain at only 40 grand. So... It's 40 grand because it's uh, graded. Is why. So what? That's worth another thirty thousand dollars for the grading. So I think the idea behind, like, I agree with Dave. If for those who don't know, Dave at Toy Ploy has a fantastic video about grading, how big of a scam it is. Yeah, um, I think the idea behind grading is that it's graded at that point, and it will quote never get worse, or something like it's permanently in this condition which is not yeah. the case as, you know, it, if I had sent off that Rancor to get graded, the uh, the Rancor itself is mint. It's been perfect condition. Last I looked, I haven't opened the box in a while, so the rubber holding the arms together may have perished. But the box itself probably would have gotten a C8 or a C8.5 if I had to just yeah. throw a guess out there. But because I had it sitting where it was sitting, even if it wasn't an acrylic case, the sun still would have faded that one side of the box which would have not been an eight anymore. Yeah. So grading's a scam to me. And I, it, I, we're openers, you know, for the most part, which, you know, Tony, I expect you to open that sealed desert rat behind you. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm an opener. I like to feel my toys and manipulate them and take photos and all that kind of stuff. So I have a hard time keeping things in box anyway. Yeah, to put it in another box made out of plastic where I can't even touch it is just why. Like if that's if that's what you're into and that's what you collect, you know you deserve to be happy like anybody else does. Not saying that you're dumb for buying that kind of stuff. It's just not my bag, and you know go with God. Yeah, so. it's like I, I, I've got no intention of ever getting that graded. Like. I've got an acrylic case for it, but it's an acrylic case that I can open and, and slide mm -hmm. the the carded figure out. Um, same with, I've got like the the loose, so you can't quite mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. But a loose desert right there in um, in acrylic. I can open that up and take and take that out as well. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when um, when Bob Breakin sent me the um, the prototype of the SAS figure. Mm -hmm. uh, action Force SAS figure. I had considered getting that graded, and I'm like, "Well, how are they going to grade this? It's a prototype for a start." Um, I, I don't know. Like, I I understand grading when it comes to coins, comics, or take comics for example. Okay, grading is based on, you know. Um, Fading, ink, creases, edge wear. Right. But all comics are made of paper. They're the same size right. and 
they can grade everyone based on the same criteria. Right. When it comes to toys, they're all made of different types of materials and different mm -hmm. plastics and rubbers and PVCs. And they're trying to apply this same grade um, to all these different types of products. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It really right. doesn't. Well, it's like the, the example that uh, Dave uses in the video is a, a Skeletor that he sends off to get graded like three times and it comes back th with three different grades and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, we know firsthand, like, you know, we've had, I've had the discussion, I don't know if I had it with you or not, but like Carter G.I. Joe, for example, the O-ring is going to give up at some point. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to have a bubble full of parts. What, what happens when it's graded? I, I get it. There's little brackets and things to keep the figure in place. <laughs> Uh, and grading at least there is now because it evolves over time what happens when yeah. the leg bands give up what happens when the o-ring gives up does that count towards the grade is it a, what if you have a he band like band replacement does that count towards the grade like it and these are things i'm sure that people who collect grading could answer for me but i just i don't yeah. see the point <laughs> Man, i i i remember seeing a guy um um on a, I don't know what Facebook toy group. He had a, he was a graded collector, right? He had this acrylic sealed graded Kenner large size Chewbacca. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, nineteen seventy eight, and I can't log on to Facebook one morning, and this guy is completely losing his shit because Chewie's arm fell off inside the box, mm. and he's like. Uh, it's not the, and it's like, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars you paid because, you know, that, that's a big figure. Right. You know, just to have the acrylic work done and everything, you know, it's, it costs a lot of money. Um, if, if that was me, because like, if, in fact, um, I had a sealed, never before opened Action Man Frogman, which mm -hmm. is, there's no window, it's in a solid box with artwork. Right. Again, that came from Bob Breakin. Um, but over time, the seller tape on it, the sticky tape, just dry rotted and fell off. So, is it still mint and sealed, or can I open it and have it? So I've opened it and had a look. Like it's not sealed anymore. So this guy with his Chewbacca, like seller tape, will not keep a box sealed forever. That right. shit's going to fall off, and then it's not mint and sealed box anymore. So, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, but that's. I feel like grading probably got to start with coins baseball cards and comic books like comics I, they're perishable like they are made of paper yeah so, and with you know baseball cards and all that like the corners get crushed you know they bend people write on them especially you know young kids their moms will write their names on the cover or inside the cover or whatever yeah um, so that uh, makes a little bit more sense to me because there's something like they have to like go through each page painstakingly be like, Oh, someone cut out a coupon from this ad, you know, that takes away from it or whatever. But I don't know. It seems like, like you said, there's too, there's too many variables with, with toys. Like, you know, if it's PVC versus ABS, you know, some plastics break down. Like if I send in a He-Man to get graded and he's all sticky, does that count? Cause the plastic's breaking down. Yeah. You know, what happens if he's in the in the acrylic and his you know plastic starts to break down or uh, Chewbacca and I think IG Eleven from the twelve inch Kenner, their bandoliers will eat the plastic if they're left on there. So yeah, that's created, that, that's a big issue with a lot of Action Man stuff where the different types of plastics melt together. Yeah, yeah. So it's like if you get a Chewbacca mint in box and you get it graded. What happens two years from now, like, because it's a, it's not a if, it's a when. Like, you know, you, you might get a perfect Chewbacca, but, you know, let's say just by nature of being in your apartment, which is, I don't know, on the East Coast, but you bought it from someone that lives on the West Coast of Canada, but the temperature difference causes the bandolier to eat through the Chewbacca. Like, now what? You've spent all that yep. money on, a, on an almost unfixable toy. Yep, hundred percent. I I I didn't have a huge collection of. I've I, I, I'm primarily a loose collector, but I've always um, liked to have an odd example here and there of, you know, be it a carded Action Man outfit or a box figure or a carded Star Wars figure. 
Mm-hmm. You know, just to have a little bit of the artwork. I do like packaging at the back of the displays. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the G- the GI Joe figures, I probably had about ten really nice carded figures mm-hmm. um, up until a couple of years ago, and I've slowly gotten rid of all of them um, mm-hmm. simply because I don't want to right. be faced with that later down the line and having you know perish O rings in there. Even uh, about a year ago, when you got the after UPS did a or USPS did a number on it, the box I sent you had the uh, vintage collection uh, Hoth Rebel Trooper in it. He was sealed on the card when I sent it. And just by yeah. nature of being shipped, he's no longer sealed. And uh, Power of the Force 2, which, like, for those that don't know, I'm getting ready to purge probably about a third, maybe a little more than a third of my collection. Um, just stuff I don't want anymore. And it's, you know, Tony can tell you I'm I'm suffocating in here. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but Power of the Force 2 is something I have a lot of nostalgia for and I'm going to keep. Uh, for some reason, Jedi Luke... Specifically, Jedi Luke is hard to find on the card because for whatever, when they did his production, whatever glue they used, he notoriously just comes off. Yep. So I've had two sealed Jedi Lukes in my time, and both of them, the bubble gave up. So. But. Um, Tony Robles, thank you for the super chat. It says, loving Action Force right now and can't wait for Series 2B in Desert Rat. Thank you. Very kind of you to say. Um, also, how do you get the... Black Rambo 50 cal. The one I got was Army Green. Just wondering on variant. Now I've I've swapped out. That's not a Rambo one. Now that's um. Where did that come from? Sunny Frisch sent that to the channel. It's um out of, out of Japan. It's a model kit that you put together. But um, yeah, I swapped it out for the Rambo one because it had like the nice um. Um, had a mount for the ammo can and everything to go next to it in an ammo belt. It just looked a bit better. So, and <clears throat> I don't know the names of the lines, but everyone know everyone who's been to a dollar store will know what I'm talking about. They're kind of the generic, like four inch, three and three quarter army guys that you can find. Mm-hmm. For the most part, their weapons are way too big for them, and they actually scale better with one twelve. So you can pick them yeah. up, and, like not every gun, mind you, but like. You'll see a pistol and it's like half the size of the guy's arm, and you're like, that's way too big, but it works with a taller figure. So that's a little yeah. little cheat for you. You know, be sure to check out Dollar Tree and Dollar General and all those kind of like dollar stores because some of those generic things, you know, they work really well. That's where yeah. like I got a um for those that saw it, my Mezco Joker video, that diorama I kind of slapped together. All that for not all, but most of that furniture came from the dollar store. It's like dollhouse furniture, and I just I just stained it with wood stain that I had laying around. So, yeah, okay. Yep. I want I want I want to I want to create like a um like a, a living room type setup, you know, with an armchair or a couch and a coffee table and a TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got I've got a crazy idea. For, you know, now that I've started doing spoof commercials in my action force videos it's got to continue mm-hmm. and i've got this really twisted idea for That's series it. 2b um yeah with a with a with a drunk desert rat in his living room and uh people yeah. like yourself and ryan and michael french i want to get them to like dial in on on the laptop as something of an intervention <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if people want me to make a cameo in their videos, they just have to have the classified Destro figure. I have him. Yeah, because for those that, I, I mean, if you if you're friends with me on Facebook, you know I use Destro as my my avatar, I guess, on pretty much everything. So, yeah, because it what's not to like about Destro? But there was a question. Oh, go ahead. Is that the question? I'm just trying to catch up with the chat here. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, Tony and Sal, when can I have either either of you on? Tons of fun to do the toy talky thing. I promise not to bring up Lego. Um, Jeff McElway, um, you, do you have your own YouTube channel? or? I think he does. Um, the name escapes me. I know I'm subscribed to it, but I, I, the name escapes me. Um, but pop, pop the name in the chat, Jeff, and we'll we'll have a look. I'm um. See, that's the, like I don't mind Lego. Like I I had Lego growing up. Um, yeah. But 
like I, it's just like I agree with yourself and Michael. Lego is separate from toys because it's like a whole. Oh yeah, he says the name is is his name. I knew that. Like I was, I don't know where my my brain is soup at the moment. It's been <laughs> overworked. Like you know when you're at work so much and all you do is dream about work all the time and it's always like worst case scenario dreams about work. I think they might yeah. call that something, but that's pretty much like I go to work, I get off work, I go to sleep, and then I dream about being at work, and then I get up and go back to work. It's, it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, but no, I, it, it's a separate thing. Like uh, There are some people who collect both. I don't know how. Um, yeah, but, I don't know how. Like I, I buy Lego for the channel Like when I do solo live streams, only because I don't think people want to see my icon flashing. I want to give them something to look at. So I buy Lego sets, I put them together, and then usually I just box them off, box them up, and I send them off to to Ryan's son. So yeah, he likes Lego. But I mean, I mean, whenever I'm in a toy store, um, I will always take a look down the Lego aisle as well. Um, you actually pick up a few movie spoilers quite often doing that because mm -hmm. Le Lego will often, uh, you know, excuse me, put uh, put characters in. Lego sets for upcoming movies, and you don't even know the character is going to appear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, which uh, not to let the cat out of any kind of bag or anything, but uh, there is a panel coming up for Iconicon where we're going to talk about movies and action figure tie-ins. And uh, at least growing up in the '90s, they kind of had the opposite. Like they would release figures and toy sets and all that, but they seldom had anything to do with the movie. Yep. Like the, the biggest one I remember was when episode one was coming out. They had a Qui Gon Jinn, and I think it's called a Gopher Fish. Is that what, what it's called? The thing that bites out yeah. of the ship that they're on. It was a set with the Gopher Fish and Qui Gon, but he had like a breathing apparatus, like a spear or something like that to fight it. And I was like, oh, that's not in the movie. <laughs> no. So you've, you, you've heard the news that Sectars is making a comeback. It is. I heard it's uh, is it not 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 Nasile, Nasil, not Nasil? I don't know how it's said. Me neither. I've never heard of it before. Um, um, I know Dave Vonner either spearheads that company or he works for that company, but they're also behind the toys that made us. I think there's some connection there. Okay, but uh, Dave Vonner used to work for Mattel and Toy Biz, or might still work for Mattel. I'm not sure. Yeah, but. Yeah, Sectars is coming back, unfortunately. Yeah, and for me. <laughs> you say again? I said, unfortunately for me, because I just started <laughs> collecting the vintage Sectars, and I'm like, oh, these are still kind of reasonable. I can get these, and I better buy the rest of them while I can. Yeah, um, Matt, Matt Swafford picks up quite a few of them, and I've often been tempted. You know, it's mm -hmm. the original Sectars, for those who don't know, it came out the year before the Coleco Rambo toy line. It was um, um, kind of a, a, a sci-fi fantasy kind of crossover mm -hmm. where all of the characters rode giant insects and you could often use, you know, put, uh, put your hand inside it as a, as a puppet mm -hmm. to use, you know, walk, crawl around with a tarantula and thing like that. It was a really underrated 80s toy line. Uh, the design of the figures was copied pretty much for for rambo so the, the reason the rambo figures are kind of articulated the way they are is because of sectars now what i'm wondering is are they going to be doing the big creatures and everything or is it going to be like so many modern toy lines today where uh, take geo joe classifieds what if we had two vehicles in that whole line yeah and they're motorcycles yeah, so the Cobra Coil motorcycle with Baroness and then the Ram motorcycle with Breaker, which I've actually got up, up here. I won't get it now, but, um, you know, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, was as much about the vehicles as it was the characters. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had a number of people ask me recently, <laughs> when I say recently, you know, over the last couple of years, um wouldn't it be cool if they did a six inch range of mask figures? And I'm like, no, that, that won't sell because no one gives a crap about Brad Turner. They care about the Rhino, the Condor, mm -hmm. Thunderhawk, 
Jackhammer. Right. It's the, I can't remember the names of half of the draw. You know, obviously I know Matt Tracker and um, that's the only one I know. <laughs> Matt Tracker, Miles Mayhem, um, Bruce Sato. That's probably all I can remember off the top of my head. You know, it was all about the vehicles. Right. What? Michael Schaefer. So you hear me. I've been waffling on for several minutes, and Michael's just basically summed up what I'm trying to say. Six inch mask is idiotic. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. is. That's the uh, so there, there's a couple things. Uh, one to prove a point further, like I'm the dumb dumb that has them, but it's like they make pilots for like the ad at in the black series, and yeah. we're never gonna have a six inch scale ad at ever. So, but it's now I just have like a random pilot who just hangs out. Um, yeah, with uh, sectars, like they're. I guess eight inch scale is like the closest thing. Cause they're a little bit bigger than seven, but I guess they're kind of Mego sized. If they just do this insects in the same, like if they just keep everything the same, they could do it. Cause they don't really take up that much room, but at the yeah. same time, uh, Gotatron brought up a good point. Um, that Nasil is also doing RoboForce. They brought them back and they're $50 a piece. So if that's anything to go off of, like, now the, 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 Robo, the RoboForce, they're like 100% like re, redesigned characters, though. They're not like the, the tubes with arms and suction cups. Like they're completely new character designs, it looks like. Oh, okay. We're gonna, oh. Like, the only thing I know about RoboForce is what I saw in the Retro Blasting videos. Right, um, which is the uh, suction cup <laughs> that gets sticky over time, which my yeah. my Legacy Collection ad at the... Toys R Us exclusive one, so it's the indoor ad at the only difference being that it has mud on its feet instead of snow. The rubber yep, yep. thing around its neck is already sticky and gummy and gross. So you know. Um Toy Connections, Ken, how are you? He says better late than never. I wanted to give Ken a shout out here because uh I'm gonna be recording with him uh later on this evening or later on this evening for those of you in America. Um Myself and Ryan um, will be joining um, Ken on the Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse. It's not a live stream. It's pre-recorded and, and posted later. But, uh, Ken, looking forward to hanging out with you later today, mate. Uh, Jeremy Jernigan, thank you for the super chat. He says, Sectar's coming back is fantastic news, but if they're not willing to produce the puppets, I'll have to pass. Yeah, I wonder if they'll even make them puppets like, to me, it seems silly to bring back like the, the glove part. I, I I I can't I can't remember the, the the names of the characters like. I have no idea. General, like, don't General ask me the Gargon name. or whatever. Yeah. Like, if, if they if they give them the insects to ride, I'll be happy. Whether it actually has to be a puppet or not, I don't. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't want it to be a pup, puppet right. now because. I'd, I'd rather it be an articulated player. insect. Yeah. So. I want a massive articulated tarantula. Um, yep. You have a tarantula this big, and then you put it next to a Valiverse desert rat, and it will show you actually how big spiders are in Australia. It's That's right. True to life. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, people talk about, like, Australia, like uh, – I don't know. I, I, a lot of people, including myself, want to go to Australia and all that. And they're like, oh, you know, the people are so nice. You know, the scenery is beautiful. You know, the accent's lovely to hear. Unfortunately, everything down there wants to kill you. <laughs> so, yeah, but everyone in Australia thinks that, you know, if you go to America on holiday, there's a 95% chance you'll get shot. <laughs> eh, <laughs> nah. No, <laughs> I'm doing all right so far, stateside anyway. Um, speaking of giant insects, I'm reminded like, so yes, I am pretty much done with Motu Origins. I, I don't really want any more of them. Like, uh, I'm interested in the Horde. You know, they have like Mantena and Leech and all them coming out. And I'm like, oh, good. Finally, you're going back to where you should be because they were kind of going off on tangents with random figure character versions and incorporating sun yeah. man into the line i would have to bite my tongue and eat crow if they were like oh by the way we're gonna put mantasaur out 
because I would definitely buy another Mantisaur. Are you are you going to um, are you going to get King Randall? <sighs> he is very important. Um, <laughs> I that that's the only other figure I want to get, yeah. King Randall. And I just have this gut feel that he's going to be really, really hard to get. It probably. Um, it's. I'm amazed that it's taken them this, this long to do him because it's like w- when you start looking at Motu at, as uh, not as characters, but as parts, you start looking at like, okay, this part is reused from this person, yada, yada. Like you see how they kind of got put together. And uh, yeah. you look at King Randor and it's like, They've had everything they need to make him except for the head for the better part of a year. I, I know yeah. Jitsu just came out and they share the same armor, but they used... The, so the, the thing that's really kind of bothering me is the Motu WWE line existed concurrently. Like they've uh, canceled that line now. It's taken on some other name. I think now it's just Mo, Motu body style versions of the wrestlers themselves are not crossing anymore. But yeah. they were using the Motu Classic molds for a lot of their weapons and armor. And it's like, if those molds, if those armor molds fit the Motu Origins, like, what are you waiting on? Like, they had it already. So it's like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know logistics behind all that. I don't know about, like, their, their grand plan. Maybe they're like, oh, we want to, you know, make people wait or whatever. Because if you flood yeah. the market too quickly with too much, then that's how things don't sell. Because people have you know, limited resources, limited finances. They can't just go buy a hundred figures all at once. But it's like when you got the stuff to make them already, like why are you wasting money doing Lords of Power, you know? So Yeah. And oh, what those recent announcements were just terrible. Yeah. Um That's- they're doing like they they're bringing knockoff figures into Motu Orange, like right, and I, I get yeah. it. Like I understand, like the Motu community's like significance with Sun Man. Like I get why it exists and why it's like such a big deal that it's being included yeah, I, I into Motu. But at the I same, I didn't really time, have an issue with Sun Man. There was those couple of other figures the other day. I remember sending a picture of one of them in in the chat, going like, "I don't even know who this guy is." Yeah, they're um, all Sun Man characters. But, ah, okay, yeah. other characters from that property. Okay. Right. But that's what bothers yeah. me. I'm like, we're still waiting on a lot of like, like big name characters. Like we're waiting on, you know, Mechanek and like Cyclone and all these guys that people know. Why are you branching off into Sun Man already? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, Matt Cropsey, thank you very much for the super chat. It says, "Hey Sal, I definitely agree with you on Motu Origins, and I stopped collecting them. However." If I do Cobra Khan, I'll have to do it. Um, See, that's another one. Like, that's a villain that existed because he was pr- like, what, like two years before the Snake Men or something like that. And then, like, they kind of retconned him into being one of the Snake Men. So it's like, where's he at? And I, I heard yeah. someone tell me that with uh, with Mecha Neck, they're waiting to try and figure out how the gimmick's going to work. I'm like, oh, you mean a swappable head? Like, seems pretty simple to me. But I get it, like, part of the line is that they're able to work in kind of the vintage gimmicks on things. So maybe with Cobra Khan, they're like, oh, how are we going to get him to squirt water? Like, but not not everything needs the gimmick to translate, you know? But with Mechanic, look, it was pretty simple the way they did it back in the day. They can just recreate that. Right, that's they're what I said. Do it it's like, they did it in the 80s, they can do it now, same way, but they want to try and maintain modular parts and all that. And I'm like, well, they didn't do that for Roboto. And his gimmick works just fine. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, God. <laughs> Timothy Ward. <laughs> <coughs> oh, oh, yeah. He wants Grimace. Um. Yeah. Let's see, Gojatron brings up Snout Sprout. Now, I don't know if the water is going to work with him. I assume it is because he has two different heads. Yeah, but, you know it's. I don't know. I don't. I, I just. I don't get it. Like, I, I think they set a dangerous precedent by doing like uh, Ninjor and Mosquito and Scareglow so early on. Yeah, 
So it's like, okay, so they're not going to just start with the first and kind of work their way through it. They're just going to pick and choose. So now it's kind of looking like, so these other characters that were kind of mainstays in the line, you guys just don't care about, I guess. Like The first Black Series figures I ever purchased, which started to send me down a bit of a rabbit hole um, of collecting modern toys. You know, that was the first sort of modern toys I'd bought in a long, long time. Is because and I, and I did a video about them, and it was the Empire Strikes Back way from a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. where you had um, Bespin Han, yeah. Hoth Leia, yeah. Bespin Luke, Yoda, and then randomly an Attack driver. Yeah. So they're, they're all Empire Strikes Back, and I've never been able to get my head around why toy companies will bring out a wave of figures four or five figures if you bring out a wave of black series and they're all the best bin heroes buy the whole wave but when it's like half of them are best bin one of them's hoff one of them somewhere it doesn't make sense and it's the same thing that's going on now with classifieds Mm -hmm. i know people have preferences to different eras and and I'm not knocking the figures like just lately they've been getting very very good, mm-hmm. but it's all over the place. Like you've got Spirit and, and Breaker around the same time that you're getting an Alley Viper. It's right, you know. It's it. I I think they should go through in in waves and go this wave 1982. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't mean that that's that's the end of it. You know, they can come back to it later, but then do an '83 wave and an '84 wave. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you, where you get a whole, uh, you can collect a whole wave, and they make sense. They go together, um, right? Well, it's like they're they're doing Python Patrol already, and they started doing Tiger. Like the, their their first Outback was Tiger Force Outback. Mm-hmm. And it's like I. I so I have it on good authority from first-hand people. Uh, I shouldn't say first-hand because it's second-hand knowledge that I'm getting, but it's first-hand knowledge from them uh, that the people behind the classified team legitimately don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's not like, a, oh, they're so dumb, but it's like they, it's seriously, it's the people that are running it don't know GI Joe. Like they're yeah. learning all of it on the fly. So I think maybe what they're doing is they're like, oh, who's expensive on eBay right now? Like Tiger Force Outback. There's yeah. another one that like because he has the tiger on his shirt. Oh, there it's missing a whisker. So that's a hundred dollars cheaper than, than you know. But it's I I don't get it. Like you know, again, not to let the cat out of the bag, but one of my videos for Iconicon this year has to deal with G.I. Joe specifically. And all I'm going to say is that if you don't like the 90s Joes, that's fine. But if you like Python Patrol or Tiger Force, you and I are going to have some words. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I can see it from the business point of view. They, they're, they're able to give um, Target or Walmart, whoever it is, the store exclusive. Right. Knowing that you know, in six months down the line, they can do a general release of the original figure, which is why I'm not going to... I'm really interested in getting Outback. I really like the look of... And we've only seen the digital render, but mm-hmm. I really like the look of the Tiger Force um, Recondo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to wait for an original version Recondo because I know it's going to come and I need that... I need that head with the Australian hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll get him eventually, and if if we don't, then that just kind of further proves that they don't know what they're doing. That all being said, I would I I, I prefer Outback's white beard and white hair compared to the red hair. For some reason, I like that look of him. So I I I, I do. Um, it it would you know. But I'd rather I'm see not that go and head. Get the Tiger Force one just to keep the head, but you know. Right. Right. Nice. Now, I'm someone who famously, I made a three-part video series on my history of G.I. Joe, basically so I could just dunk on Classified. Um, and I stand by what I said in that video. Um, 
because back then they still had the gold shin pads and the tuning fork guns and the nerf guns and all that. Now they've made a lot of strides in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited to get Spirit when he shows up. I'm excited for this Storm Shadow because people seem to forget we are getting a Storm Shadow. Finally, like a, a good looking Storm Shadow, not the yeah. Blizzard version or whatever that was. People seem to forget when Classified Wave 1 had dropped, they announced a Storm Shadow, but he had a sleeve tattoo. And they never released that version. Did he? Did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, back what when, mean, when they What kind released, of sleeve tattoo? Uh, it was like a Chinese, Japanese red dragon that went down his arm. It was uh, back when they did Gung Ho. When they released Gung Ho, he was mm-hmm. part of that same announcement, and they never released that Storm Shadow. Ah, so this people, this one looks really good. Pinless yeah. joints. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder where they got that from. <laughs> I'm not well, saying Bobby created it. I'm just saying, like, it seems like they're copying his homework a little bit. So. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I love, I love this figure. Mm-hmm. I love this figure, Captain Britain, Marvel Legend. Many thanks to uh, Laser Pants for sending me this. Yep. What I hate. Yep. Are the red pins in his in his elbow? Mm-hmm. It just looks stupid. They can do it. They just won't. <laughs> yep. I don't know. Oh God. How much time do we have, Jeff? Um, there's a, there's oh, this question here. Um, I, I would, I would say Motu Origins, but I've got to be honest, I haven't actually sunk that much money into it. Um, I, I've been, I've been blessed with some very kind people sending me stuff, and oh, and I when see. I say re- regret, I don't, I don't, I suppose I don't really. Re- I had very, very high hopes for the line. I, d- I did a very complimentary video um, on the first couple of waves of Motu Origins. But since then, it's gone the way of a lot of other toy lines with distribution issues and people can't get things. Um, I've already decided that when I move into the new house, I'm going to keep my Castle Grayskull and my Snake Mount. I'm going to keep my vintage Motu. But I'm not going to display the vintage Motu. I'm going to keep the vintage castle on display with the Origins figures because they just display better. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that I've sunk a lot of money into and kind of regret it. Um, during the early 2000s, there was, a, there was a big resurgence in the popularity of 12-inch G.I. Joe. Mm-hmm. Um and following on from movies like Saving Private Ryan, a renewed interest in World War II, there was a company called um, Dragon, um, like Dragon Models. I think they do model kits and stuff as well. They started a range of 12-inch World War II soldiers, lots of different German uniforms, American uniforms. And for a while there, man, I was buying tons and tons of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I just got to a point where I was like, I'm just not into this anymore and got rid of it all. Um, lost a lot of money when I got rid of it all. And I think, well, you know, I probably spent five years buying up all this stuff and then just, yeah, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so that's a bit of a regret. Um, yeah. I have anything several, for you? Several. <laughs> um, so. I have almost a complete run, m- minus a couple of them, of the NECA 1990 TMNT Movie Ninja Turtles. I don't know yeah. how to say all that and make it sound good, but I, <laughs> I, I, re- I regret buying all those. Um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Lightning Collection, I regret buying those. I'm not like I have like con exclusive ones and all that because I was like, oh man, these figures are great. I love these things, and then just slowly over time, I was like, "These really aren't that good." Like, I just I lost interest in them. Uh, my Kingdom War for Cybertron Beast Wars stuff. I was buying those because, like, oh, you know, like I I love Beast Wars, but the vintage ones are expensive because 
you know, it gets to a point because they all have ball and socket joints and eventually those joints wear down and they become loose. And then, you know, people will change the price based on that. And you're, it's, so I was like, you know what? I'll just buy the Kingdom War for Cybertron ones and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy with those. Well, they reissued uh, the Beast Wars, Optimus Prime, Cheetor, uh, Rat Trap, and Megatron. And I bought the Megatron one. I uh, bought them, I was transforming them, like, yep, yeah, I like the vintage ones. I don't want these new ones anymore because these are the ones that I love. So those are three lines I regret buying. Um, I, I have, a, I regret uh, the Valiverse Action Force because um, I didn't spend enough money on them. <laughs> Um, I didn't. I didn't get enough Wave One. Like I got, uh, I got two of everybody, uh, of the core characters, and then I got a bunch of army builders. But I'm like, oh, I need more because I'm like, I started doing the customs for the three PLA live stream. I'm like, oh man, I could make some really good ones, but I don't have enough bodies to spare. So for Wave Two, I'm like, I'm getting two or three of every main character. So, yeah, yeah. But. Uh... Lyo Convoy, thank you for the super chat. He says, I hope you two are well. I am very well, Thomas, and I am uh, looking forward to your stream on Retroblasting at, is that 9 p.m. Eastern? Mm -hmm. um, I think so, yeah. For, for those people who are not aware, um, this stream is being hosted on Retroblasting, but Michael French will not be on the stream. It's going to be hosted by Lyo Convoy, where through a Discord account, you can phone in and ask questions of uh, the owner of Fan Strike Back and the sculptor of, of the band. There, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of things going on in the collecting space around the Fan Strike Back banter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that, um, Thomas. I have shared the link on the Analog Toys uh, Facebook as well. So. Uh, I also um, regret Motu Classified and Vintage Mo uh, Motu Classified, Motu Classics, and Vintage Motu. So yeah, I, when I got into Origins, I went down a rabbit hole deep, a deep <laughs> rabbit hole, uh, deep, hard, and fast. Um, but uh, it just so happened that Seth Hastings at Plastic Galaxy had acquired someone's collection, and they had a lot of classics in it. And I was like, oh, man, I just got into Motu. These things are cool. So I bought, like, the entire, entire collection for, I wouldn't say on the cheap, but they hadn't blown up in the way that they did, like, a year ago. Like, now there's, like, a huge resurgence revival in it, and people are charging through the nose. So I got a, si a, number, a sizable collection of them for a more than reasonable price. And same thing with Motu Vintage. I was like, oh, I got to get these vintage ones now because I have the Motu Origins there. I'm going to put them on the shelf together. And I'm just like, oh, I hate these things because they don't <laughs> anymore and they're getting sticky. And like, I, I, I knew better. I knew better. And I did it anyway. And I replaced a he band the other day. And I've never, I, I hate myself pretty regularly, but that was like a new level of hate I hadn't experienced. And it's just, you know, not worth it. So, you know, kind of refocusing. That's part of the reason I'm selling off a chunk. I'm refocusing the collection, trying to make some of that money back so I can, you know, yep. redistribute it where it needs to go. Uh, Monkey Boy Cloth, Cloth Cat says, at Analog Toys, do you have any toy-related tattoos or would you like any? Uh, no, I don't. And no, I don't want any. <laughs> I have I have been joking with Bobby Valor that me and him should go and get matching tattoos of the Action Force logo. Um, when I say the Action Force logo, I'm talking about um, that one on the body armor. Oh, the steel. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, yes, I, I said to Bobby, hey, let's go and get a matching tattoo, and he told me where to stick it. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I don't have any toy related tattoos, and no, I don't want any. To be, I don't think I'll ever get a tattoo again i was getting tattoos when i was in the military and sitting here now i'm covered in tattoos and like mm, what was all that about <laughs> oh i i had dreams like that because I, I have a number of tattoos I, I you could argue i have a toy related tattoo it's 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 an ip related tattoo that there happen to be toys of um uh -huh. it's, a, it's a star wars tattoo but um 
you know, I was getting tattoos there for a while and I was like, oh, you know, they're expensive. But, you know, if you do cost over time, if you get them in your 20s and you have them for the rest of your life, you spent less than a penny a day. So, yeah. Um, but or about a penny, whatever math's hard. Um, <laughs> I had plans. I was like, oh, every, you know, when I joined, I was like, every duty station I go to, I'm going to get a new tattoo everywhere I go. And I didn't do that. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty far behind on that promise I made to myself. <laughs> so I, so, so I, I, I can remember making a similar pact with myself when I was in the Australian army. It was everywhere I was going to go, I was going to ta- get a tattoo. And I probably kept that up for maybe three years. Mm-hmm. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it um, didn't help the one of the first places I went and tattoos are illegal. Like it's so it's only going to get them and all that kind of stuff. So there's a black market you can go to. Like you don't physically go to a black market, but there is an underground tattoo network there. But it was yeah. very, very shoddy. It was like some of the guys were really good, some of the guys were only good sometimes. And it's like, wh- what do you? Who else are you going to go to? And I was like, oh, I don't want to get this piece of shit, you know, prison uh, poke tattoo that looks bad just because of this promise. So, but yeah. Oh well. Uh, Brian Dillingham, thank you for the super chat. He says, where is the best place to get diorama supplies? Uh, the floor of my apartment. <laughs> um, hold on. So uh, actually, um, Amazon is great. I just type in like 112 dollhouse. Then you can find shares and stuff. Uh, Hobby Lobby is great. Like I don't know if Michael's or Joanne Fabrics or any of those places, but Hobby Lobby has like a whole dollhouse section. And they tend to be 112 scale for like furniture and all that. Uh, Dollar yeah. General is great. But um, a lot of the diorama stuff I'm doing now, like the, if anyone watched the t- Tyranid Gene Steeler, the, 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 the multi-armed alien thing that I did, I made that diorama out of pink foam. And I went to the plumbing section of uh, Home Depot and just did that with paint. Yeah. So, yeah, you've, you've got to be inventive, and I suppose it's really dependent on what type of diorama you want to make. Like um, what, what you're talking about there, Sal, is very much for like, you know, in, in a building type thing. I, mm-hmm. um, I, I like going to uh, – I mean, I've, I've got a fish tank, and I've only got goldfish, but I love my goldfish. Um, so I'm regularly going to the, the fish shop buying, you know, new conditioner for the water and new food and things like that. And I always look around at the new stuff they get in. I went in there the other day and they just had this for the fish tank. Oh, nice. So I buy this. And of course this is not for the fish tank. This is for desert wrap because look how awesome that's going to look in some photos. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, a f- fish shop is a, is a great place to go, but yeah, just, tr- just try and be, you know, think outside of the box a little bit. Think outside of the box, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, another place, eBay is great. There's tons of people out there doing 3D printed things. Like I, I bought, uh, I showed them to Tony those orange barricade things that say like Bob's Barricades, where they have like the blinking yeah. light and all that. Uh, bought those. Um, another people don't think about it, but again, you got to think outside of the box. Um, the clearance sections in Walmart. Anytime there's a major holiday um like halloween christmas all that kind of stuff you can get yeah, yeah. all sorts of stuff uh the turbo man video i did he's wearing a santa hat at the end that santa hat was attached to a like santa christmas ornament plushy thing and it was on clearance for like a buck or whatever it was maybe not clearance but it was it was there and it eventually went on clearance but I bought it for a dollar and i just ripped the hat off the hat and the beard and stuck it on the turbo man for the for the video yeah <laughs> so um, Tim Ward. <laughs> Tim Ward says, "I'm going to get a tattoo that says I love Tim." Tim, if you do that, I'll get a tattoo that says I heart Tim. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get it as well. I'm going to get the eye and the Tony on separate butt cheeks, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Um. Kieran Ball says, Tony, are there any grail pieces from the $6 million man toy line that you still want for your collection? Um, yeah, but I'll never pay the price, so I doubt I will ever get it. It's the Venus Space Probe. Um, see if I can find a picture here. 
$6 million man, Kenna, Venus, Space Probe. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, trying to trying to download it and it's not won't, won't work. Hang on. It's all good. I I have no I have nothing to add to this because I, I don't know six million. I know like the shin -na 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 from like the intros, but like that's it. I know nothing about six million dollar man. So I know they tried to like kind of reboot it, I guess, in the early aughts with like Bionic Woman or something, or they did a reboot of Bionic Woman or something. Yeah, with an actress who used to be in EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> um. The, I, I don't have everything from the $6 million man toy line. I've got a lot of the stuff. Um, I would like to get this. This is very, very hard to acquire. It's very expensive. It was in one episode. If you see it here, um, in the episode, it was actually much, much bigger than this. It was like the size of a Cadillac, this thing. Um, it was like a... I actually think in the show it was like a Russian probe or something. I think the, the episode was called Death Probe. Um, but a cool, interesting toy. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't looked one up for ages. Last time I saw them on eBay, it was, they were like 800 bucks. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not paying that for it. Um, it like Alex's cousin or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> trying to catch up with the chat here. Yep. It's been going a mile a minute. It has been busy. I need to take a, a pee. You, you, you're happy to hang around, Sal, for a bit yeah, more? go for it. Go for it. I'll, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm not in a rush. Answer questions. Answer answer questions. Yep. I'm, I've got to go have a pee, then I'll come it's back. My, <laughs> my first time on YouTube, though, so be gentle. Okay. No. <laughs> Let's see. Let me... Scroll up here, see where where I left off because I've been trying to read it as time goes on. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, Scott Hughes. I, I can't highlight comments on my end, but Scott Hughes asked if we'd seen the twelve inch GI Joe had a Vietnam Joe leaning against the Vietnam. Uh, I do remember that one. I do remember that one. Um, I was, uh, gosh in the third grade so however old i was in the third grade i do remember seeing that um we'd gone to the state capitol where i'm from and they had this th like this huge mall because the mall that we had i use that term very loosely for mall but the mall we had in my town was like one floor and had like a couple places like it had kb toys but back then it didn't didn't even have a food court back then but this mall was like three stories, had a food court on top of the McDonald's inside of it. And that blew my mind as a kid. But there was a, I don't know if it was KB's or Toys R Us, but there was one of those in that mall. And I remember going in there and looking at all the G.I. Joe's they had. And I, I distinctly remember that diorama. I didn't get it at the time. I didn't know what it was. And I remember thinking to myself, this is stupid. He doesn't come with any guns or anything. Because, again, I, I was in the third grade. I had never even heard of the Vietnam War Memorial, let alone seen it. So, but I do remember that. So, um, see, Jesse says his biggest regret was buying Playmates mini Robotech toys. He bought five of them for 10 bucks each at a con, and now I'm looking for more. Oh, huh, okay. I didn't know Playmates did, or unless it's like vintage or something, but yeah, Robotech is kind of like, to me, if I saw Robotech as a kid, I'd be like, oh, G.I. Joe, because it's kind of the same articulation setup. Similar, not the same, but very similar. Um, let's see. Look and see if there's any super chats that got missed or skipped or anything. I don't think there was. So, all right, I'll skip down to the bottom. Uh, do, 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 do. do you think they'll ever make a comic Mandarin? I, I don't see why not. I mean, he's green and has rings and all that. Like, it's not like a character or anything like that. So, or at least the Mandarin that I think of when I hear Mandarin, you know. Because there's always different versions. So, uh, yeah, Vander, am I looking for the spirit 
I am 90 euro on eBay from Spain. Uh, see that that's part of the hang up for me is I, I'm not big on international shipping because it's going to be an arm and a leg to get it here. Um, I did see one on eBay that was it was reasonable. Like I was like, oh, okay, it's you know under 300 bucks. It was like a buck fifty or 200 or something. But I also had a broken crotch, so I was like, I don't know if I want to spend that much money on a broken crotch. Um. Sal's a baby compared to many of us. You hush up, Michael Schaefer. Your car is <laughs> older than me. Uh, Brian oh, Dillon, Playmates did Robotech Max with the Exo. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Exo Squad. Freaking great. If it, I, I swear by that show. Like, it's a cartoon, yes. It's other 90s, yes. It, the show is so good. It's so good. Never seen it. It. If you have the chance, Tony, I highly recommend it. Like in the first three episodes, they tackle heavy topics. Like yeah, right. They talk like because I'm gonna muddle it like really bad, but they created a race of aliens, uh, Neo Sapiens, to basically be slave labor for Mars, and then they revolted, rose up, and all that. And they tackle race. They tackle like corrupt politicians. They tackle a lot of really heavy topics in that show, and it it's so good. And they do it in a way that's interesting and not beating you over the head with it. So yep. kind of like how X-Men, uh, if those who haven't seen it, watch the X-Men animated series. It's fantastic. It and is. They, they cover like the AIDS crisis. They cover, you know, racism and bigotry. All, but they do it in a way that's interesting without like being, we're talking about AIDS. Like you kind of <laughs> have to like, you have to see it for yourself. You're like, oh, I okay, and you have that connection. But you know, it's I, I love the way that they used to tackle things. And Todd Smith asks, "What my favorite Power of the Force two playset, vehicle, and figure are?" Um, the playset I like the uh, the Cantina cardboard foldout playset because uh, it comes with the Sand Trooper, and that's my favorite uh, trooper. My favorite figure is Bosk, hands down. And my favorite vehicle, I'm going to count the Dewback because the Dewback is my favorite vehicle that also comes with the Sand Trooper. So nice. Yep. Um, Echo Base Network, do either of you have the LJN Thundercats Sword of Omens? Nope. I have nothing Thundercats because I don't like Thundercats. <laughs> I, 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 it's not a toy line I, I will ever collect. Um, the, the only Thundercat I would be interested in is Panthor. The only or Panthro, rather, um, yeah, that show like it didn't really exist. I get, I mean, it existed, but it didn't exist in my worldview until whenever it came on Cartoon Network after a certain point. And I v only vaguely remember things. Um, I remember liking Panthro, and he pronounced the word uh, mobile, he said mobile, and that was the first time I'd ever heard it said that way. And I know it's been disproven a hundred times. But I have distinct memories of a crack being on uh, Lino's uh, capsule. And I don't know if that was edited and added on there for that syndication. But I have like very distinct memories of it. Or it could just be like a memory displacement where we're so used to that being a trope. And yeah. the reason process that maybe my brain just put it in there. But I know, I know it's not in the script. It's not in the original tease. It's not in anything. I, I get that it doesn't officially exist. But... It just in my brain, it's like locked in there. But I would be interested in Panthro. That's about it. Monkey Boy Cloth Cat, thank you very much. Said Tony went to spend a penny to his reimbursement. Yeah, I also had to uh, stop the cats from fighting. That's why I was gone for a little bit. Damn cats. Grace is working today. So, um, George Aitken, any toys you have added to other toy lines that are a great match? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is my. So this is the Jackal Armoured Fighting Vehicle, which is made for 10-inch figures, um, but the vehicle is very undersized. So I was actually watching some documentary footage yesterday of Ross Kemp in Afghanistan where he's with the British, I think he's with the Royal Marines, and they were using Jackals. And I was looking at the footage going, man, this is actually perfectly scaled to Valiverse. So this has got, so this is a Valiverse figure with a HM Forces vehicle 
with a Coleco Rambo GPMG on the front and a model 50 cal machine gun um, on the back that's got the cool ammo can on it. So it's like four different toy lines all pieced together. Pretty much all of my toys are toys that I buy for my other toys. <laughs> like, like the gene, like uh, gene stealers, I bought because uh, I was like, pretty much like, the gene stealers, the Kikimura. Like, I'm a big fan of big scary monsters, and I talk about it in your uh, uh, ba balancing the scales. Is that what that video is called? Tipping the scales, yeah. Tipping the scales, yeah. I talk about it in there, like, scary monsters are the easiest thing that you can fudge into any toy line. And so I'm always like, oh, man, this would be cool for my action force. Oh, this would be cool for my action force. Like, I I, I hate to be dude, action force hell, but <laughs> it's a new property. Yes, they have their backgrounds. They have their character stories and all that. But it's a new property. So the story is still evolving. And for the time being, I can do whatever the frick I want with it. Yeah. And I'm always buying stuff for my other toys. Like I have this gigantic, uh, I almost said Gojutron because I saw his name on the screen. Uh, this gigantic uh, Cygor on the floor behind me, uh, the new McFarlane one. I bought it because I was like, I got really excited. Uh, Gorilla Grodd is a character I don't know really anything about, but I love the character design. I, I, it's, it's He's a gorilla and he's, I don't know, he's cool. So I had the McFarlane yeah. Gorilla Grodd, and I was like, oh, that Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Kickstarter was going on at the time, so I bought a bunch of the Thane Gorillas and all. I bought the monkeys. I didn't really care for the cats much, but I bought the monkeys. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be Gorilla Grodd's army, and this Cygore thing is going to be like his heavy muscle. It's going to be like this experiment that he's working on, and then Action Force is going to have to show up because the swarm was gene splicing with monkeys. And like, I, 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 I don't know what you would call it. Immaturity comes to mind. I guess immaturity is the word I'm looking for. But uh, when I look at toys, my kid brain activates and I run through play scenarios in my head and I get all hyped up for them. Then I buy them, then I open them, I review them, and then they sit on my desk for months at a time. So. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. Um, Lion Convoy, thank you for the super chat. He says, I'm currently changing the shelving of all my Transformers. Help, please. Uh, uh, Thomas, me and uh, Sal are in the same boat. I'm getting ready to move house. Sal is trying to declutter his collection. We had a, a FaceTime chat um, a few hours before this stream, and he was um, – Sal doesn't have a bedroom or living room. He's just drowning in boxes of toys. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, my collection has an apartment. I just live here. And people yeah. think I'm joking. <laughs> and no, it's like – if you've seen uh, what they call the Ar Retro Blasting Archives, that kind of room where all the spare toys go, yeah. it's like that with a bed in the middle, and that's pretty much what <laughs> I live in. <laughs> and some guitars. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, I think thirteen or fourteen guitars. The last time I counted. So, and you know, I for those that don't know, I studied music in college. That's what my uh, my bachelor's is in is in music, and guitar is my primary instrument. But I'm at that age now where like I have I've been playing for over 20 years and you know, I'm, I have arthritis in my hands now and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just I have too many of those. So I'm offloading a lot of that stuff, too. Like yeah. I'm going to keep probably my what I run into is I'm like, OK, these are my my two objectively best guitars, the quality of wood, the setup, the everything like there, there's a lot of nuance between guitars and the, you know, I have objectively my best two, but when I go to sell one, I'm like, Oh, but this is the one I played through undergrad, but this is the one I, you know, this is the oldest guitar I have. This is my first acoustic guitar. This is, and it's ugh, sentimental bullshit. Uh, Matt Cropsey. Thank you for the super chat. It says, Sal, do you have the Sarlacc pit <clears throat> four pack from target? No, I do not. Um, I believe I've seen that before. Uh, never in person. Um, yeah, it's probably from about 10 years ago. I was, I, I had an idea for a video a while back and I was, I oh, actually, no, I, I did that, 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 those two part videos on the, um, the Star Wars creature feature where I was talking mm -hmm. about, and I was going to acquire the Sarlacc pit being another Star Wars creature that we didn't get in the original line. Mm -hmm. But, man, it was going for a lot of money. Um, yeah. 
was not cheap to pick up. Yeah, there are. But then, uh, like, what, 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 when I was a kid and I wanted to play Return of the Jedi and I wanted to recreate the Sarlacc pit, I just dug a hole in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, that was uh, a custom I, I started at one point. Um, and then I scrapped it and I threw it out because I didn't make much headway. I was actually going to make a Kenner styled Sarlacc pit, or at least what I think Kenner would have done at that point. And yeah. I just never did it. Basically, what I was doing, I was looking for, uh, I guess, kind of plastic molds, I guess, that would resemble snow, like little holes or mounds or whatever. And it was just going to be on cardboard. And that was going to it was going to be a picture of the Sarlacc because that's, I think, what Kenner would have done is it would have been a printed picture of the Sarlacc with like little plastic things of sand. Yeah. So it but, wouldn't be made out of resin with loose legs? No. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It is better than factory injected plastic. Um, um, but, uh, Karen asks if I sold if I still have my Sentinels. I only have one. I ended up selling the other one. Yeah. Um, you ever seen um, when you go to the beach in a, in a place where, like, you know, the the, the thing from a sh- uh, cuttlefish can um, wash up on shore? The, right. the white, you know, what I'm talking about? The white part of a cuttlefish. Mm-hmm. So they would used to wash up on the beach in England all the time. We obviously had a lot of cuttlefish in the English Channel, whatever. Um, and I can remember taking two of those home from the beach, digging a hole in the backyard, sticking those in, and it was like the the beak of the Sarlacc pit. That was – so I, I'm old enough to remember seeing Star Wars before the one last time special edition things that came out in the 90s during that resurgence. And I remember, so the, the set we had didn't have all the, like, the beak and all that stuff, and it didn't have the added, yeah, yeah. like, two backs and all that. And I remember seeing the special edition at a friend's house, and where I saw that beak come out of the Sarlacc pit, I remember going, this is dumb. <laughs> like, to this day, I think the beak is the stupid part. Like, I was, it was much more terrifying with just a random hole in the desert with inward-facing teeth. Yeah much more terrifying jeremy jernigan thank you for the super chat he said someone say animal warriors of the kingdom i heard it's still available for pre-order through backer kit is that like kickstarter like another website or i think it's kind of like how uh Cradox works it's similar okay, thing yeah. where it's like still available um yeah i mentioned it uh, i got the monkeys i'm uh, I'm, I'm so out of the loop with that toy line, like I, I've, I remember seeing some announcements. There's like a, like a crow animal now, and like there, he's like doing other animals, but it, like I don't know if those are a bit. Like I, I saw a series two point five for pre-order. Like I didn't even know there was a series two. Like all I knew was the the Kickstarter. So I'm yeah. I'm way out of the loop on all that. It'd be it sure would be nice if uh, someone made a, a, a show about that just once and kind of answered all those questions, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to be having Jeremy on. T- so I've, I'll, I'll make the announcement now. I, I was talking in a Patreon message the other day about the return of Palatalk. I'm going to have Jeremy Jernigan on for a Palatalk, but he's recently uh, moved to another state, I think, mm-hmm. um, in, in the US. Um, so it got... The pallet talk got delayed because he had moved and then he was kind of waiting for all of his stuff to arrive. And then now that he's ready, I'm now in the process of getting ready to move. So once I get moved and settled, Jeremy, I'll get in touch and we'll schedule it. So uh, give me a couple of weeks to, to relocate to the new house. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested to know how many people we've got in the chat that have seen the first episode of Moon Knight. Um, I know I asked you earlier, Sal, mm-hmm. you don't have any interest. If you have seen Moon Knight, type one in the chat. If you haven't seen it, type two in the chat. And we'll we'll uh, we'll kind of see what's going on here. I have seen and, it and I have seen it. If you would like to moon it. Keith Knight, type three in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> or or just get a tattoo with I on one cheek and Tony on the other cheek. That's right. <laughs> um Yep, quite a few ones. Also a lot of twos as well, a lot of twos. Um, so I I watched it. D- 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 
I don't know what is going on with me in Disney Plus. I keep telling people I'm done with Disney Plus. So I wanted to watch the end of Pam and Tommy, right? That only fit the last episode was only like two weeks ago, I think. And then I can't remember if I forgot to cancel my subscription or if I've cancelled it, but I've still got a few weeks left on it, you know, because you pay it monthly. And if if you cancel it the day after you've paid for it, you've get it, still got it for another 29 days or whatever it is. <clears throat> anyway, out of the blue the other day, I get an email from Disney Plus saying, you know, now, now available on Disney Plus Moon Night. And I clicked on it and going, oh, my Disney Plus is still working. I'll just sit down and watch this. And holy shit, man, it is the best Disney plus anything so far. Really? Um, yeah. I think it is Oscar Isaac's best performance of his entire career. Like, obviously, there's a, I think, I think it's a six part series. There's yeah. five more to go. Um, Michael Schaefer, this is not an April Fool's joke. It's the third of April here. I'm being deadly serious. I was so I know nothing about the character, right? I've never read the comics. I don't even think I knew who the I don't even think I've ever heard the name of the character before. Um it was so refreshing. Oscar Isaac plays a character who is basically suffering from mental illness and mm -hmm. schizophrenia, you know. Yeah. Moon Knight. Superhero Marvel, he's possessed by an Egyptian right. god. Yeah, Moon Knight. Uh, I get him and I've always said Phantom X, but I, people say it's Phantomix or whatever. It's another character that dresses all in white, has a coat and all that. Yeah, yeah but they yeah. both have like multiple personality disorder or something. So, yeah, Moon Knight is a character that I was like, I, I know who he is, but my knowledge of the character pretty much ends with his name and his costume. Uh, Egyptian Batman is how I've heard him described many times. Yeah. So. Well, I I watched the first episode. It was very, very character driven. Um, his his kind of schizophrenic mental illness. It's used as a, you know it's part of the plot, but mm -hmm. it's also actually like the main focus of the story and. Um, Man, the, the the character that I, I, I don't know where this is going to go. He so there's he plays a guy called Stephen who is um, works at a gift shop at a museum in London. Um, he has an alter ego called Mark Spector, who you only see a couple of times in it. You know, he talks to him in the mirror. It's mostly a, so I don't know how those other characters are going to work out, but every time he is Stephen which is 95% of the first episode, he has created such an endearing, likable, mentally disturbed character. It's, I, I'm so invested in, in the character that he's created. I'm like, mm -hmm. I just really hope Disney don't screw the pooch on this show as, as it, uh, as it proceeds. Um, That's like my, my aversion to not watching it or I, I guess my aversion to watching it because aversion to not watching it doesn't make sense. Um, it has nothing to do with Oscar <laughs> Isaac and his like existence in like Star Wars because he's a almost to a person. The actors in those movies are actually really good actors. Like John yeah. Boyega did voice work for a remake of uh, Watership Down. Phenomenal. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Daisy Ridley. The best role she had was as a corpse on some British TV show where she's naked. So I don't, I don't, I don't really know anything about her. Um, but Oscar Isaac, he, I know the movie gets crapped on a lot, but he was Apocalypse, Age of Apocalypse. And yep. for people who don't, who didn't realize that, that tells you how good his performance was. That you didn't know it was him. Um, yeah. But also, he did a movie, and I know everyone talks like this is the example everyone uses. But he was in a movie called Ex Machina. And that movie was phenomenal. It was so yes. good. And that also had General Hux in it. So it was proof that these people can act. It was Disney and J.J. Abrams that were the problem. Yeah. So. Absolutely. No, he, um, 
I haven't seen everything he's been in, but um, yeah, the, the Ex Machina is is one that really kind of stands out to me. That's a, that's a great film. His performance in this is better. Wow. Um, yeah. No, but, I but obviously I'm only basing. If people are rewatching this stream in six months' time and the show turns out to be shit, mm -hmm. I'm saying right now we've only seen one episode so far, but it started so well. There, I've got to talk about the soundtrack, man. There is a a chase scene where he's driving a cupcake van being chased by some nondescript kind of mercenaries in in an undisclosed European country. You know, he, he kind of, he, he wakes up, doesn't know how he got there. And they start chasing him down this like long winding road down like these, these hills. Did the Beatles and the play? music is... Um, the long and winding road by the Beatles? No, no, no. Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham. I love I'm that like... Story. I, I, I unironically love that song. So do I. And it works so well. It's, uh, yeah, the, sh the show is so. very dark, but very funny. Um, mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Just to circle back a little bit, um, I, you know, I talked about Ex Machina. I know he was in Dune, I believe. Oscar Isaacs was, was in Dune. Yep. And I haven't seen Dune. Um, I saw the original one, or my original. I think it's been done like three times, but the one I remember had uh, Patrick Stewart in it. But uh, if the Oscars are anything to go off of with Dune, then you can't make fun of Will Smith's wife for having no hair. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, uh, I guess it, it won like, not that the Oscars are really any like benchmark for good movies, but I guess it won like six Oscars or something. Six, six or seven, yeah. It didn't win best film. It, I don't think it won best directing. None of that, none of the acting. It was all like um, editing, sound editing, costume design, production design. Those were the kind of Oscars it, it won. But yeah, it, it, it won six Oscars. So did the fucking Hurt Locker. <laughs> now, I, I don't think it was in the running because it came out too late. But if the Batman doesn't win an Oscar next year, then we know that stuff's rigged. What Oscar do you think it's going to win? Uh, I wouldn't say best leading actor because even yeah. though I do, I very much like the movie. I don't think Robert Pattinson did much acting necessarily. Um, supporting roles, I think Colin Farrell has a strong yeah. chance because you know, or at, at the very least, best makeup because holy shit, like he looked yeah. nothing like Colin Farrell. Um. If Zoe doesn't win, like I don't know, sexiest support or something, then I'm gonna be I'm gonna riot. I'll be a one man riot. <laughs> um, because the I know Bobby doesn't like that Catwoman. She's my favorite Catwoman now. Like, yeah, same down bar none. So same. But uh, do you? I I was talking to Bobby about this. Um, and I have a friend at work that. Uh, well, periodically just talk for hours about it. I have some theories about where the the sequel to the man might be going. Um, yeah, okay. I know. I know it's kind of it's loosely based on Halloween, um, but and I I I noticed this, and no one else seems to have noticed it. Everyone else says otherwise. In the end end scene or the end, I guess battle confrontation. He injects himself, like he has a little patch in his suit that he opens up and injects himself with something. And people all thought it was adrenaline. Mm -hmm. I think it's venom. Because, and I, I texted to you guys in the group chat, like as soon as I saw it, because it was green. Adrenaline's not green. Like he injected himself with something green. And if it was just adrenaline, why did he hesitate? Like, because he pulls it out and he kind of stops himself a little bit and then injects him because he knows what it is. So I think that we'll end up seeing Bane at some point. And yep. since the Riddler is in Arkham, uh, ideally I don't want them to utilize the Riddler heavily in the sequel because he's in Arkham. Like he can still do Riddlery things. Like he had this, you know, big plot or something set up because maybe him going to Arkham was part of it. Maybe he's just that far ahead of Batman. But 
we have the Joker, who you guys have seen the movie. Like that makeup alone would have gotten an Oscar. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we're going to see the Scarecrow in the next one because Jonathan Crane is a doctor at Arkham Asylum, and both of yep. those characters are in Arkham. <clears throat> so, yeah. So I, 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 I never, I, I thought he injected himself with adrenaline as well. But now that you've said that, and I, and I kind of look back on it, I'm like. Yeah, because they never explain what it is in, mm-hmm. in the film. And, uh, yeah, you know, it is. It's almost like fluorescent green. Um, yeah. yeah, I think he might be onto something, Sal. Um, and that's, uh, I think we'll, we'll see Bane, and uh, Michael Schaefer brings it up right here, uh, in the, the Tales of the Dark Knight series, Batman got hooked on using Venom. And that's why Bane is addicted, because it's an addictive property. That's why Bane uses it. And I think and what, his hesitation is like, uh, like, you know. Where does the venom come from? It's a, uh, I want to say it's a plant. Um, if I remember correctly, it's like a rare made up plant or something. I might be conflating that with like Ra's al Ghul's fucking uh, rejuvenation yeah. chambers and Lazarus pit. But I think it's a plant is where it comes from. Uh, it's location. I don't know, but um I know Bane, at least the Bane that I know is Cuban, so maybe it comes from Cuba, and you know other drugs come from Cuba, so maybe that'll be like their tie-in, like he's a drug runner or something, and you know drug runs Venom or something. Yeah, yeah. But that's that was I, I didn't care about you know the weird accent that Tom Hardy used as Bane. Like it wasn't that it was a weird accent; it's that it wasn't a Cuban accent, and he's from Cuba. Steven S. says Costa Rica. I thought it was Cuba, but, you know, I, it could very well be Costa Rica. Yeah. So maybe it's the seas that are throwing me. Um, Michael Schaefer says, uh, that was an amazing storyline in the comic. Batman got hooked and went through hell. I think it was Tales of the Duck. Um, Michael Schaefer, you read Batman comics? I didn't, didn't know that. You you always, you know, the, the, the Star Trek Star Wars guy. Mm-hmm. Um Interesting to know. Yep. So and they, they they've established you know other drugs and all that um, in that show already. I forget what they what they call it in the movie, um, but there's drug heads pretty much everywhere. So it wouldn't be that far of a stretch since Venom yeah. is addictive. Um, but I don't think we'll see Catwoman in the next one. She does her I'm going off to Blood Cove or whatever the thing's called. I don't remember. And they kind of part ways. So I imagine she'll come back in the trilogy, the, like the third one. Um, I, I think they though because I know they're doing a Penguin show, which I think is kind of a weird thing because they, they announced the Penguin show that they're doing before the movie even came out. So, yeah. I'm like, that's a little weird. But uh, I think, and I don't really want them to do it, but I think we'll end up with a Catwoman movie with Zoe Kravitz. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind looking at her for two hours, but <laughs> I, I'm not sure that she could carry the movie on her own. Just like I don't think Robert Pattinson could carry that movie on his own. I think the supporting cast around him really helped. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I've been saying for a while, I like how this movie is disconnected from the other DC movies. Like the Joker was disconnected, and yeah. What I wanted them to do was to do an anthology series where they did like the Joker and then they did the Scarecrow or they did uh, Mr. Freeze, you know, do a Breaking Bad style Mr. Freeze where his wife is sick and he starts doing all these things to try and treat her and all that. And then he gets, you know, into Mr. Freeze halfway through or whatever. And then do like Poison Ivy. And uh, when I think of Poison Ivy, I thought of it like, I don't know if you've seen like Acid, that crocodile movie. Which crocodile movie? Lake Placid. It came out in the nineties. Back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I think of like Betty White's character in that movie, but it's you know <laughs> Poison Ivy instead, where she's like <laughs> has all these plants and she brings people over and they die and all that. And then yeah. at the end, do one about the Scarecrow, where he has all of them in Arkham and he's like you know doing his thing and then releasing them as a set and calling them the Arkham Case Files. So I thought that would be kind of a cool thing if they can make all these just sort of tangibly loosely and then have it be its own thing 
Yep. Yep. Because like Ryan, as much as I'd love to see like Killer Croc and Man Bat and Clayface and all those things, I just they have to establish early on that the rules of that universe allow for them to exist. And this Batman, those characters will never exist. So. Uh, definitely not Clayface. Um, yeah. It would be, it, you know, we've, we, we've seen the Scarecrow, obviously we've seen a lot of Jokers, mm -hmm. although this Joker does look good. Yeah. Um, from the deleted scene on YouTube, but, um, which I don't, I don't think it was deleted. I think it was intentionally removed. They say deleted scene, but from my understanding, the people who found it had to cipher the Joker or the cipher the Riddler's thing and they had to find it. That's why it's unlisted on Warner Brothers. So, is it? Mm -hmm. It's unlisted. Or at least it was when it first showed up. Like when we saw it, it had the little unlisted little link thing, that little symbol they use. Yeah, okay. So, but that's what I think. Um, well, I, I I was kind of suspicious of that clip as well when it came out because normally you don't get deleted scenes until you can buy a movie on Blu-ray or 4K mm -hmm. and they, it comes on the disc. Um, you know, while it's still in theaters to release a deleted scene, I, I don't know. I've, I've never heard of that happening. Um, right. That was very, very unusual and... and um, I, I still kind of don't quite know why they did it. I suppose. Uh, that's genius marketing though. It gets people to like get involved and, you know, I, I wouldn't, I guess you'd consider that guerrilla marketing almost. Yeah. Where it's like they have the cipher and like at the end credits, it gives you that little thing and the Joker, or I keep saying the Joker and the Riddler cipher. And it makes you like, Oh, I need to crack this. And then you can use it on their website and that, takes you to different it rewards you for doing it and it it basically treats you like a pseudo batman like you have to solve this kind of thing yeah so uh impossible pie says a better mr freeze would be welcomed as well yeah yeah so like, like you're saying clayface can't exist in the rules of that universe um established yeah. in the first film and I would, you know, I, we've only had obviously one live action version of Mr. Freeze and it is terrible. Um, yeah. Rather than seeing Bane for the third time or Joker or whoever, again, another Two-Face, I, I would like to see a good version of Mr. Freeze. I think that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of potential for a lot of his... I mean, Batman and Spider-Man arguably have the best rogues gallery out of any superheroes ever. Yeah. Um, but he has a lot of, like, very obscure ones, like Calendar Man and uh, what, what was his name? The Rat Trapper, is that his name? He's like a reverse criminal where he steals junk from people. Or the Rat King or something like that. I don't remember his name. But it's like, yeah. those are the people that they have the potential to really get twisted and kind of turned around into something better like yeah, the riddler yeah. like you know when you say the riddler i think of a guy in a green suit with a tie and a bowler hat you know but <laughs> yeah. the riddler is very different and it's you know it's really good oh uh, go to rat catcher that's his name okay rat catcher uh. yeah. he's he's such uh. a dumb character <laughs> but, i wonder if know. he's gonna catch desert rat nah <laughs> Um, egghead. Nah, <laughs> no one wants to see egghead again. Um, uh, you know, you, talk, you talk about the rogues gallery. I think Desert Rat's already got a pretty good rogues gallery of villains Bone Collector and Kerak. No, no not a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Old Bone Collector and old Kerak and. I guess the swarm to an extent, but it's like, are the swarm bad guys or are they being paid? You know? Um, I have no idea. I'm I'm waiting to to learn where the story goes. Yeah. Hmm. Same thing with that. That's the mark of the best villains are the ones who are righteous, like the ones that are doing the thing, but are a hundred percent convinced that they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So that's why Thanos worked so well for the MCU because, yeah, 
he killed half the universe, but his his to him the end justified the means. Like it was there was a, a goal, there was a reason for it. He was trying to balance the universe and try to fix everything, and that's what made him so compelling. Where it's and just look, like and if, that guy. And if, and if the half that's going to turn to dust would be social media trolls, I'd be snapping them all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Like when, when I think of trolls, just to address that quickly, when I think of trolls online, I think of like fourteen-year-old kids, you know, calling each other slurs and stuff, and like chat forums and all that. Like that's what I think of when I think of a troll. You know, some some kid who's can't control themselves is you know going through hormone changes and all that kind of stuff. Like they're you know makes their brain do dumb things. And then I joined the toy community in a public way, <laughs> and I was like, oh, these guys are in their forties and still behaving like this. I'm like, how do they look their spouse and their kids in the eye? Like, hey, sport, what'd you do today? Oh, you know, I got an A on my test. Well, I caught a man a meanie head online. <laughs> like, seriously yeah i mean i guess everyone needs a hobby and that's a cheap hobby but good lord yep oh, well, also well. we're getting close to two hours and um i'm gonna have to take my son to work soon um uh, well i don't i don't have to i could make him ride but it's it's pretty it's pretty hot here and he ends up you know, i don't like him turning up to work or sweaty for right. a shift mm -hmm. we, we make him we make him scooter home but um, um but look um before we sign off sal um i'm gonna i'm gonna plug your channel um because sal does for those of you who don't know sal's channel right he creates these wit filled reviews a lot of reviews of modern action figures but unlike a lot of the other channels that I go to that can make a 20, 30 minute video, like talking about rollout, I, I can't talk about rollout for 20, 30 minutes. Sal will do it in five or six minutes, tell you everything you need to know. You'll be laughing all the way through it. Um, and you've got to be quick to pick up on Sal's wit. Um, so the link to your channel is in the description below. Uh, where else can people find you, Sal? Uh, they can find me at Iconicon this year. Um, we're mm -hmm. ramping up for that. Uh, I'm Two Cents Toys across all social medias. Admittedly, uh, the Instagram is the only one that I actively use. Um, the, the the Facebook and the Twitter were created only to retain the name, so that way, like someone wouldn't try to swoop in and pretend to be me, that I have to do that uphill battle. Yeah. Um, so if you try to reach out to me through the Facebook, uh, the Two Cents Toys Facebook proper. And uh, the Twitter, you probably won't reach me. Um, Instagram, I check it regularly. And usually if I'm working on a video and I, I take a photo for the thumbnail, usually I'll upload that photo on the Instagram first so you can kind of get a preview of what's coming up. Um, hasn't been any <laughs> anything done in a couple of weeks now, but hopefully that'll change soon. Um, ideally, once this apartment looks like someone actually lives here, um maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll film a collection tour uh, people have been asking me to do that for a long time and you saw today why i haven't done it because i'm like eh, you know. but, oh yeah 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 you, if you if you did a collection tour the way it looks right now yeah. <laughs> people would watch again they'd call um, it and ask for a health and wellness check uh, yeah. if but I look, not, not not only are you are you you working really really hard at the moment in your day job you also spend your downtime working for Valiverse. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I go there a lot to help pick and pack orders and all that kind of stuff. And usually usually yeah. what I do is I just sit there and strike Bobby while he's trying to do his job. So I'm like, so, oh, Bobby, what do you think of this? What about this? What about that? Who's this? What's, what's the plan for that? So, what, 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 is, what does he pay you? Don't, do you get paid in Taco Bell? or No, no. I, I, get, I get paid in uh, hours lost of sleep. No, no, it's so not I, even minimum wage. No, I, I, I do it just out of the kindness of my heart. It's I, I show up and I help, and I like I, I like I tell Bobby because he always offers to pay me. I'm like Bobby, I come down here to hang out with you. Me packing an order I, or something is just a byproduct. So if I if I just so happen to, you know, 
live within driving distance of Bobby, I'd do the same thing. Grace would never see me every weekend off. I'd be at Balaverse, much like you probably distracting him from doing his real job. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, so thanks so much for hanging out, man. This has been a, 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 I've really enjoyed this. It's just been a casual chat, engaged with the audience. Sometimes we, we were discussing having a topic and then sometimes it's better to just, I think freestyle. Um, I've really enjoyed this. So, um, uh, it's it's fun having a topic. Kind of restricts your movement. So yeah, yeah. Um, Timothy Ward says, "Sal, when you're packing my desert rat, slip in a limited edition Sergeant Slaughter." <laughs> so a Sergeant Slammer, one of them. Up one there. of five hundred. Yeah, that's, yeah. Those are those are kept uh, where I can't reach them. Uh, Bobby puts them up on a high shelf where I can't reach them. <laughs> How does Bobby reach him? <laughs> a step ladder, I think. Yeah, a series of rigs and pulleys. Um, but no, it's 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 fun down there. So I just hang out and periodically I'll be like, "Hey, Bobby, you want to put this in the line? You can. That's okay." Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. We're going to sign off. Thanks, everyone, in, in the chat for being here. Thank you very much for the super chats, etc. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.